Last week, I did a whole live stream talking about a podcast that Rachel Hollis posted and then deleted where she talked about her cancellations and different things that she's regretted posting on social media. The podcast was only live for a few hours and then was deleted and it's now back up. However, there's about 12 minutes that's been edited out. So let's talk about what she cut. But what I want you to ground yourself in right now is that I literally don't know a single person who likes doing social media. I'm sure they exist. Uh, I'm positive they do, because it seems impossible that there would be this massive thing that exists in the world um, that there aren't people who love it. But I, in my life, I don't know anybody who uses social media, especially those people who use it to put their work into the world, to create content, those creatives, photographers, artists, singers, celebrities, actors. I, um, I have a really cool job in that I get to meet a lot of people and interview a lot of people and have people in my circle who have much greater followings than I do and do much bigger work with much more impact than I ever will. And behind closed doors, sitting around a dinner table, having coffee in the morning, I am telling you, I don't know a single person who enjoys it. So nothing super juicy there that she cut. So let's see what else is gone. And asking myself better questions and asking like, how the hell did I get this so wrong? And understanding privilege in a way that I hadn't before. I don't know that I would have any of that information if I hadn't gone through that. But at the same time, doing something wrong and getting it wrong a lot because it's happened more than once. So just that one line, because it's happened more than once was cut. And I guess you could infer that maybe they cut that because how can you show that you're really learning and growing if it's happened more than once? So that line was erased from this newer version. So this part that she cut is part of her tips as to when not to post. Um, some of the examples were when you're hormonal, <laughs> LOL, uh, when you're angry and when you're stressed. So here she is expanding upon those ideas and this part was cut from the re-upload. I had two years, like when I was telling you guys about like the brand and when I felt like sort of other people had control of my brand, I had like two years where people on our team did my social media. And that is so wildly dangerous because from the public's perspective, you are speak that like what they see is your voice. And I had this horrible situation where something was posted on my account that was a quote from Maya Angelou. And the person on our team, bless her, just didn't check it or didn't, I don't know. I shouldn't, I shouldn't speak for her or why it happened. But publicly, that looks like I did it. And also publicly, that's my responsibility because this person is on my team. So I'm taking full responsibility, but every single thing that happened since then in press, in social, they reference. And also she stole the quote from Maya Angelou. That's not true, but again, we are not in control of the way things are received. But again, we are not in control of what is received. We are in control of what goes out. So now there's no mention of the team member who made a mistake. There is no mention of Maya Angelou at all. She just skipped right to the end where she's kind of wrapping up her advice. So that was the biggest omission and the difference from version one to version two. But let's just hear to the end to make sure there's nothing else I'm missing. The final thing that it looks like Rachel Hall's cut from this episode is the anecdote about Andy Grammer. Basically, she uh, talks about a post that Andy Grammer posted of Rachel Rachel and some commenters uh, were not super happy with that and said they were disappointed that he was supporting Rachel. And this is what she had to say about that. It's so funny. It's not funny. This is how the universe works. But it's so funny that this topic came up today because I had gone on Instagram to post uh, to promote today's podcast episode. And it just so happened that what I opened up was a first thing I saw was uh, Andy Grammer. And it was me interviewing Andy Grammer. 
and it was on his feed. So I follow him and it was the first thing. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Um, he's become a buddy. And so I went to go put like heart emojis, like I'll comment and put heart emojis. And if you know me now, you know, I never read comments. So I only even knew that the internet was very upset about the picture of Noah because my dad called me because he was like, oh, this is, you know. So I don't read comments and that's a decision that I made because I want to be able to put the content out in the world and I don't want the good feedback any more than I want the negative feedback. I don't want the good feedback because it will train me to chase success. Ooh, they liked this. Okay, I'm going to do more of this thing so that I can get their love more. Like I'm telling you, this psychological stuff goes deep and I, I'm really mindful of it. So I don't consume comments either way. But because I commented on his thing with the hearts, I just happened to see the first two comments under what I was writing. And the first one said, this is so disappointing. And the second one said, I can't believe you would do this. Rachel Hollis is so problematic. And it like took my breath away. Cause I was like, wow, I inter I'm just, I'm interviewing this guy about COVID and his tour and, we had a really beautiful conversation and we talked about family and life and addiction and overcoming hard things and the loss of his mother. And it just was such a beautiful conversation. And I just thought that that, that was what was received. Like in that clip, he was talking about something pretty hard and the people weren't even listening to what he was saying. They were just trying to poke him or shame him for associating with me. And my normal reaction to this in the past would be I'd go down a shame spiral and I wouldn't go on social media for like two weeks and I'd feel so embarrassed and I would one million percent let two comments from strangers tell me who I am. And the two comments from strangers would keep me from creating content to the three million people who listen to this podcast every month. I'm not kidding. In the past, 100%, I would shrivel into a small ball and I would only function to like do the necessary stuff and I would take care of my kids. But I would let the comments of two strangers decide who I am. And thank God I saw that today. And I just very quickly, because I've been practicing really hard, I was able to take a step back and look at that. And I was like, I am not problematic. I'm not. Problematic implies that I am living my life or doing my work in a way that is causing issue, that is, I don't know, being doing things wrong. And as a human being and as a creator in this world, I have absolutely done things in the past and gotten it wrong years ago. And I've learned and I've grown. And I like to believe that anybody who consumes my content today can see that and also is okay with the humanity of one bad day inside of a 15-year career. One bad day inside of a 15-year career. Inside of 10 books, inside of almost 350 episodes of a podcast, inside of thousands of social media posts, one bad day has made these people decide that I am wrong and bad and forever and shouldn't be allowed to interview people anymore. <laughs> and here's what's beautiful about this life. They are absolutely allowed to their opinion, 100%. But because I know myself and I know my heart, I don't have to let that opinion shape me or my work. And neither do you. This is not a space and has never been a space for perfect people. I am not perfect and I get it wrong, but I do learn and I do grow and I keep showing up. I keep showing up.
I'm positive I'll get it wrong again. But that's life. And I just can't buy into a narrative that says that we all have to be judged by a mistake in our past. I just, I don't believe that. And so I don't hold those opinions as my truth. And if something like that happens to you, if you see a negative comment or someone says something about the way you look or someone says that you're bad at your job or I hope that you will pretend that they said something so outlandish, like pretend that they said, oh my gosh, Lauren is an alien from outer space and I saw her make out with my dog yesterday. Like pretend that they said something so bananas that you just, you're like, whoa, okay, that's wild. That person has a really interesting world perspective, but that actually has no bearing on my life because it doesn't. I I don't know what the end game is for people who want to hold on to past mistakes of public figures and want to keep bringing them up again and again. Um, I don't know what the point of that is. They're 100% allowed to, but I'm just going to keep doing my best. And There are lots of people who are also trying to do their best, and I'm sure you're one of them. But I think if you know in your heart who you are, that's going to help you so much because you can just ask yourself that simple question, wait, am I a bad dad? Wait a minute. Did I? Sometimes we need to hear, right? Sometimes we need that course correction. I told you that story earlier where I learned something incredible and I learned more from that past harsh experience than any other time in my life. But I don't know that I believe that most of the people who still want to shame for a past mistake actually care about whether or not I've grown or learned or done what I needed to do. I personally think that the podcast being deleted is more than just a scheduling error. If there wasn't so many things taken out, um, big sections of content of this podcast taken out, I might think like, well, it was just the wrong time. The scheduler got mixed up. But now that I've heard it and the Andy Grammer and the Maya Angelou sections in completion were taken out, I'm going to say that it was posted. Somebody on Rachel's team or in her life had said, hey, I don't know about this or someone on Andy Grammer's side of things said, hey, cut this out and then they decided to go back and cut anything that was too controversial. That's my personal opinion. Obviously, I have no idea or insider information. So maybe it was just an honest mistake and then they decided to cut things out. But it does seem strategic that certain things that sort of were more on the inflammatory side, more on the admitting of guilt side, um, were taken out in this edited version. So what do you think? Are you surprised about the things that were left in? Are you surprised at the things that were taken out? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.